Okay, in this video we're going to go over the interchange related civil sales that are available in the uh, delivered workspace. Um, you can see the sales we, we currently have. It's a couple of ramps, uh, exit ramp terminal and that entrance ramp terminal there. And then we uh, have a couple of turn lane sales, exit and entrance uh, that, are, that are both tapered. All right, I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, choose a ramp exit and say OK and we'll go place this sale. So what we're going to do with this video, similar to the rest of the civil sale videos, we're going to go through and place the sale. We're going to perform horizontal edits, vertical edits. Um, on this particular set of sales, we're actually going to go, go a little bit further than we generally do with some of the edits. Or generally with, a, you know, with interchange areas, there's going to be uh, some target aliasing, clipping involved, so we'll, we'll demonstrate some of that. We'll also uh, demonstrate how to kind of take the, the civil cell, which is just the terminal area, and go and expand on that and uh, complete an interchange ramp altogether. So, so first thing is placement, so let's go place the cell. So through road edge of pavement, and then locate the ramp uh, Locate a point, a ramp start point here, so that could be a data point anywhere, just really where I want the ramp to start or the ramp terminal to be. I'm going to actually snap to, I actually placed this line right before the, the start of this video. This is a line from element and uh, placed it 90 degrees from that edge of pavement, but I'm going to come in and just snap to that as my ramp start point. And really the reason I did that is uh, so you can come back and or I can come back and I can move that line and I can move my whole ramp terminal there. All right, so I, that all looks good. So I'm going to reset and there's currently not a clipping uh, terrain involved, but there will be uh, in this sale. Uh, it actually should be, but it's not in my demonstration. But um, in this particular example anyway, I'm going to actually use just a template display rule to cut off my shoulder and my end conditions through this civil cell area so we're okay moving forward even though I'll correct that in the cell. Alright that geometry look good um, so I'm placing that cell now okay and that looks a little a little strange, but I really think that's just a six to one uh, taking off right there. We actually have a, a linear template here that is just a six to one slope, and uh, it looks like it's maybe hitting a ditch or something like that, maybe. Uh, but I'm not not too concerned at all about that because we'll eventually come back and target uh, this inside taper here, so, which will limit its length there. So let's let's talk about horizontal edits. So, like I said, if I wanted to come in and grab this line here, so if I wanted to adjust its location, what I can do is just come in. I'll probably go to a near snap. I'm gonna grab this move point, and I'm gonna just scoot back a little bit here. You can see that whole ramp going with it. And then I'm on a data point and accept that location. If you watch a 3D view. You'll see the entire uh, cell move. Okay, so you know that's all dependent on you placing that line, uh, line from element, and snapping to it during the the cell placement. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just for the time being, I'm gonna turn off construction class elements. And we'll go over a few of these horizontal edits here. Come on, rotate this view. Just so we can kind of see those edits a little bit better. And then, um, really, the, your, your primary, your, really, your first, the first element that was built in the cell is that outside edge of pavement there. And it was actually built uh, using the art from element rule. You can see it's initially 1,500 foot radius, uh, offset of from the edge of pavement 12 feet, and then you have a 500 500 feet of uh, of the length there. Obviously, any of that can be changed. I'm not I'm not going to change that uh, 
in this in this example uh, that we're going through we, we will make some edits but just not to to those values there uh, another note there is that you also can add a back transition you know if, so if you wanted this to be a you know, if you wanted maybe a four degree curve then a two degree curve or or a two degree I'm sorry a two degree exit and then change to a four degree or something like that um, you know you've got that back transition where you can come in there and add a curve if you need to alright so like I said no edits on that one the the, the two elements that that uh, I guess your next two critical elements are these purple elements here which really control the location of your nose there so we'll choose that you can see that's an offset initially of 18 feet and we will change that so I'm going to just zoom in here into 3D you I'm going to change that 18 feet to negative 16 okay we should change that node location and then looking at this other one here this is actually 16 feet off of your uh, off of your edge of pavement there and really that you know that 16 feet if we selected this nose right here so that that, that element there is 16 feet but if we come in and select this element there you can see it's 12 feet there which gives us a, a four foot nose there so that's kind of how that that nose is worked out and that's definitely how you know its location is determined where these two elements right here intersect all right and really that first edit that I made to this element there I just really changed really used to control your uh, you know your ramp full width there which is 16 feet in my example and kind of talking about a couple of other elements you see this dash blue line here those elements are if you look in here in the 3d views you can see that that dash blue actually represents a break line in your surface template here there and it's two elements it's uh, one that transitions from full width back here to uh, currently two feet off or, or negative 14 feet off this side there but uh, it really gives you room really gives you a little taper right here All right so if we if we change that to negative 16 it really wouldn't give us a recovery area right there so so really both of these elements what what they're meant to do is really transition the the driver from a 12 foot roadway back here to a full 16 foot width right there and like I said, this this first one we're going from you know I made this edit, change that from 18 to 16, so we're going from 16 to 14, and then from 14 to 12 feet there. Those are just two transitions, is all that is. And you could actually change that one to. Uh, it's going to cause that one to go with it. Looking at this, and we we kind of grabbed this taper. We didn't say much about it a while ago, but. You can obviously change its length there, or that ratio, as needed right there. I'm not gonna make edits to that in this particular case, but that's a, it's another edit you can you can actually make. And then one more thing about this this element there. And if so, if we grab. element there so that that taper length there that you're seeing like 126 whatever point whatever is actually controlled by, by this element there so if we change you know if we want a little longer taper here we could actually come in and uh, what, you, what you can't do is you can't push it past, past the end of that ramp if we want to come in and make that 150 can make that change there like that that's really controlling your taper your taper length there you 
okay so as far as horizontal uh, edits going other than completing this alignment there's two other elements that I hadn't really talked about and that's these shoulder elements here and if we came in and grab that parent of that interval there you can change that's so initially set up six feet and that's this one represents your paved shoulder All right, and then I could grab that and it's eight feet off of that taper and then we also have another hard graphical unpaved shoulder there which is just set up two feet initially All right and that's that's kind of what you're seeing right in this area and this area there on the 3d view now, as far as vertical I'm not going to get real in depth. I'm actually not really going much through the vertical process here. But basically, what you have to do is reference in. You know, you have to have your main line super elevation calculated, have your ramps super elevation calculated. And you're going to have to actually, you know, look at those and see how you want to transition, you know, from the super elevation on your through road to the super elevation on your ramp here. And uh, some of that may even be back here uh, on a on this on this added turn lane right there. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to do it. What this thing is set up initially as is is really like we've done pretty much the majority of the sales is two percent. So a slope of negative two percent on that element there. All right, which can be changed you know and like I said that's what you're gonna to have to look at your super see what your super is on your through road and then you know transition you know at some point this is gonna be two percent if, if your through roads two percent and but at some point you're gonna to have to transition and start road you know getting into your super elevation for your ramp there And you, you know, like like I said, what you're gonna do is reference your super, see where you, see what that super is, and then you're gonna come in and basically just use these. Uh, we we'll use this profile by barrel variable slope here. It's probably what you'll use most of most of the time. So you, you know, you want to go from negative two percent to negative four percent, and then from negative four to negative six, and then maybe you know something like that if you had a seven percent full super right in this area right there all right, so that's basically how that's going to work and like i said most all of these elements all these elements if, they, if they've got a profile they're probably going to be profiled at two percent so if i looked at this element here which that is a complex but if i came in and, and looked at that you can see at negative two percent for that for that taper up there and then if we'll come back in and look at a couple of these elements, um, like that one there, uh, profile, that's positive 2% actually off of this outside edge of pavement there. All right, so 2%, 2%, positive 2 back up there. And, uh, and I'll, you know, what, what it's a matter of doing, like I said, is referencing your super, seeing what it is, and then making, you know, opening a profile view of this element here All right and then projecting those slopes with that command I showed you and then once you have a new profile right there just complexing it and making it active and then that cell is going to adjust Okay, so what I'm going to do next before we get into a little of the target aliasing and the clipping and, and things like that, I might actually go down here and place a uh, that tapered uh, turn lane there. So we'll go ahead and place that other cell. So. And this is going to be a turn lane to uh, exit tapered. Data point at the storage lane start. So that's actually going to be right there. And then locate your uh, road edge pavement is that. And that geometry must be backwards. So if I flip that, you can see that taper, the storage lane taper come in there and it looks good. 
so we'll reset and accept that sale okay and then the you know this this storage line or this turn line is pretty pretty straightforward I mean your edits are, are there 200 feet 150 for the taper and uh, it, it's obviously controlled you know it says 12 feet there but that's based on that snap really where I snapped to there I'm not gonna go over really any any edits not gonna actually make any edits to that I think that's pretty pretty straightforward same thing with the slope if we we'll look at that slope negative two percent like I said that's that's what you're gonna have to open a profile view reprofile as needed complex make active okay so we're gonna talk about uh, target aliasing and clipping next um, before I do that, I'm going to actually turn on construction class elements and we're going to open a cross section view and just kind of look at uh, what we have right now. Alright, and then I'm going to just uh, a station be a data point about right in that nose area there and we can kind of see what we what we have there which it looks pretty good but the first thing we need to do is get rid of this here right and that's the through road um, in condition and a shoulder and all that in there so like I said the next thing what we're gonna do is we didn't clip so we're going to go to, if you look at this little, uh, just editing this template library. So this intersection right, so if I move it to the right, that uh, turns everything off, shoulder and everything off there. So, and it's, we'll double click that point. You can see it's got a, a label there of INTR. So, so basically, I can move that point with the with the uh, parametric constraint uh, just by making it greater than zero. So that's what we'll do next. Okay. So what we're going to do is go go to corridor objects and add a parametric constraint, which will trigger that display rule and and uh, cause that element there to be turned off. So we'll go to add new intersection right and then we'll set that to one one and then uh, we'll zoom in here and uh, I'm gonna really just get this station snap into that generally I snap I'm not exactly sure what's going on I I've got a civil cell that's dependent on another civil cell and both cells are dependent on the the four lane, four lane corridor so it could be a circular dependency issue is the reason I can't just snap and data point here so what I'm gonna do is just uh, with with AccuSnap just hover over it and I'm hitting control key on my keyboard and then I'm gonna move off that point and paste that value control V to paste that value back then I'll data point and then I'm gonna go to the other side here I'm gonna do the same thing so instead of snapping uh, I'm gonna just control C and control V All right, so there's there's really I'm not snapping to those things. So if that taper link changed, I'd have to go back and adjust the limits of this parametric constraint. All right, and ideally we could just snap there, but I it's, I think it's a circular dependency issue. I've I've tried it prior to making this video, and it's a uh, it just will not add the point control when I'm when I'm doing the snapping there. All right, so I'll just data point. All right, we'll let that process. Okay, so we can see that uh, that 
through road uh, in condition. The shoulder's been removed there. Okay, so what we're going to do next, I'm going to just kind of move forward on these cross sections and just kind of look right in this area here. And what we're, we're going to do is actually target with, with this uh, template here or this in condition, we're going to target this. Right now it's set up to be targeting existing ground. Uh, and this thing also, this particular template, the one I'm talking about is actually this one right here. Um, it's set up initially in here. with a parametric constraint to float that slope there from 5% to 16.67% uh, and I, I believe that has to do well, the reason that's done is because there's actually a template right up here that um, that targets that we're going to actually add a we're going to target the two end conditions on this side here with it but but I mean, obviously, you can you can play with that value right there. But that's that five percent or six percent slope right in here, and it's transitioning down to like a sixteen six seven. So that's the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna target um, define target aliasing for this corridor, and then we're gonna add the the DNC taper, right? Which that's the DNC taper here. That's the this taper off this taper over here. We're going to add that, and then we'll add uh, original ground as well. To be honest, I don't even know if I don't think really a existing ground would be needed there. <coughs> and then if we come in and just touch this cross section view, we should see that in condition cut off there, and it is. All right. Okay, so we're going to add the clipping reference next to uh, remove or clip that in condition there. I'm going to actually just change the uh, the presentation to wireframe. And then you can see this right there where I'm clipping. All right, so to do that, corridor clipping, add clipping reference, and we're going to choose that corridor there. And then locate the uh, elements to, to clip about. So that linear template would be one. And then not to sell, but that template there. This template there. And then also that terrain uh, terrain model there. I'm going to reset and we'll click the cross section view and you can see we've kind of got that cleaned up there. Okay so the last uh, target aliasing I'm going to do if you'll see that little segment right there that's actually this this template here at this uh, that uh, unpaid shoulder nose right here so so we'll define target aliasing for that and then we're going to target the uh, taper and the DNC linear template there hit apply close and we select this view here see that that's gone there so and then if we go back to a illustration ignore lighting and kind of look at this you can see that this looks uh, pretty much got that area cleaned up pretty good there okay so what we're going to do next is we're going to create uh, create this alignment over here uh, for the remainder of that ramp so I'm going to come in and just use a single offset of tire element. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, set that alignment feature. Alright, and 
and set this offset of zero. Choose that. And then I'm going to come in and uh, line from element. Skew zero, start distance zero, so enter start point, key point there. Okay, then I'm going to choose the uh, line from element command. Zero ninety zero looks good. Confirm that all set. Enter a start point. And then we'll come in now and place an arc between elements. Alright, at any time, you know, if I wanted to, to lengthen or. So if I wanted to come in and change the length of this element there, I have the ability to do that. 500 or 550. Okay, so you can see that's all ruled against each other there. And then I'm going to just go ahead and complex this. And then we'll call this ramp. Okay, and then we're ready to look at a... Uh, Look at the grade, look at the profile, so we'll open this up. Alright, and then for the kickoff grade, I'm going to just do a, a slope projection. And we'll choose that. And we'll choose that, uh, that edge of pavement that's in the uh, cell. Project it slope. Alright, and then uh, we're also going to do an intersection point. We'll choose that element to show the intersection, and then that, uh, that's the element it intersects. Okay, so as far as setting this grade, I'm going to actually zoom in around the nose area, and really the nose is somewhere in there. I actually want to find that out uh, pretty accurately there, so I'll, I'll probably use Civil AccuDraw. And uh, just like place line, we'll do like a, a O for origin, and I'll go choose that line there, and then I can come in and see if I do a key point snap there. I'll copy that station, just Control C, and then probably what I'm gonna do is go to go to just uh, MicroStation here, and I'll. in or, or paste that station with a Z of 50 maybe and then paste that station again a Z of 60 this time and then really probably just to go on a little bit further I'll try to go as quick as I can because this is kind of getting outside the scope of that sale but uh, probably a vertical offset from element here Probably going to go with a different, uh, just a different, uh, different feature so I can see a little bit different here. So, uh, slope style, that's really not the one I'm wanting there. Offset transition is really what I'm wanting. So, lock to start. Offset's going to be zero, and then uh, just do 
double click and there. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to uh, just set a rough grade from this point forward. That's really my kickoff there. I'm going to just do a complex by PI. Uh, vertical curve length 200, that's fine. I'm going to take off right here at this point there. Just eyeballing a tangent there. And then go down somewhere in here. And then we'll just do a that. So rough grade, not not looking at K value or anything there, but uh Next thing I'm going to do is come back in and complex that. Alright, and then I've got my grade, design grade there. We'll make that active. Okay, so we're going to create a uh, corridor for this ramp. Alignment now. Reset for the active profile. Confirm that corridor name. And then uh, for the template, we'll actually use a linear. This uh, ramp with baseline. Right side. And it's a fill only on this left just because we're still targeting. Uh, we're going to have to target. Uh, the taper area and plus possibly a little bit more of the mainline corridor there so we'll use that template there and uh, confirm that and then we're going to come in and just uh, snap to there and then we'll lock to end that created so now I'm just going to come in and and do the uh, the targeting okay corridor and then we're going to uh, target the taper corridor four lane and the original ground terrain model Really, I think all we'd have to do next is just add clipping. And that's to this taper there. And then add the corridor there as a clipping reference, which should have clipped that there. And then obviously, what we'd need to do next is place a, some kind of T intersection down here at this end and uh, to get it completely modeled there. 